excited about this chat. This might be one of the most exciting ones that I've had that I'm, I'm excited for. And the reason is because I have seven incredible photographers, as you can see on the screen here. In fact, if you don't already follow these people, be sure to go follow them. Their Instagram is right there under as their name. Um, and what we're going to do for this, how I shot it is each one of them is going to share a photo. And then we're just going to kind of discuss, we're going to kind of talk about what, how we think the shot was created, how it was lit. Um, and then that person can kind of add some clarity to it and tell us for sure exactly how it was done. Um, as we're doing it, if you guys are watching on YouTube, uh, be sure to comment below, let us know, you know, ask questions if you have them, or let us know what you think that, how they look at and what modifiers they used and so forth. So with that, you guys ready for this? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Do it. Awesome. In fact, before, before we do, can I just quickly just go around really fast and can each one of you say your name? Let's, uh. Uh, just so everybody knows who you are, let, let's start. Uh, I guess my screen is going to be different than yours, but maybe maybe just say your name and where you're based out of. How's that sound? Is that cool? cool? So let's start with Victoria. Let's start with you. Hi, I'm Victoria Sprung. I'm based out of Chicago. Awesome. And then Alex? I'm Alex, I am based out of Maine. Perfect. And then Linda? I am Linda, and I'm based in the Bahamas. Wonderful. Christian? Hola. Hi, I'm Christian from Bogota, Colombia. Excellent. Matt. Uh, I am Matt. I am from Philly, actually. So there you go. <laughs> he's, he's representing there. And then Esteban. Hey, I'm Esteban. I'm in Connecticut. And I was born in Colombia, too. So I'm a fellow Colombian. Medellin, though. <laughs> awesome. Medellin and Bogota. Um, all right. Yep. And then Jesse. My name is Jesse Laplante, and I live in Boulder, Colorado. Fantastic. Again, thank you guys so much for being here. Appreciate it. Um, so before we got started, we all did the, uh, what do you call it? Nose goes? Is that what it is? And uh, right. I think Linda was, Linda was the last one. So that means Linda gets to share her image first. Okay. And, and what we'll do again, Linda, you share it. And if you have, if you want to share, you know, 10 seconds or 15 seconds about the image, you guys are certainly welcome to just try to don't give anything away. And then okay. what we'll do is is we'll all take turns just kind of uh, trying to figure out what we think, how Linda lit the shot. Okay. Uh, here we go. Hold on. Oops. Can you, can we you can. see it? Yeah, we can. There we it go. looks beautiful. Oh. So, so Linda, maybe tell us just briefly kind of where it was shot and, and okay. know, maybe, maybe just a few seconds about it. Just, just kind of okay. give us a background. Um, it was shot in the sauna in a spa, <laughs> so it was super hot, um, and, um, it was a really quick setup, and, um, I had a lot of fun with it, so I don't know, I don't want to say too much, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was, um, yeah, <laughs> that's perfect, that's perfect, and actually, you know, just to, just to kind of let everyone know, too, one of the reasons I love doing this kind of thing is, is oftentimes our lighting can be very, very simple. It could be one light, right? It could be something super, super simple, but we create something unique and different. Um, what I love to do is I actually, when my wife is shopping, um, like for example, Target is a perfect example. I love looking at all the posters that are around Target and trying to dissect exactly how they were lit, right? Or in the makeup counter. I love at the makeup counter, like going up and looking at all the photos and trying to dissect exactly how each one was lit. Was it, was it Rembrandt light? Was it loop light? Like, what were they using? What kind of modifier? And so I hope as you guys are watching this, whether it be here with my seven awesome photographer friends or on YouTube, that you guys can look at these photos and try to decide for yourself how you think it was lit and dissect it because it be, makes you a much better photographer. So even better photographer, I should say. All right, with that, thank you so much, Linda. It's an amazing image. Let's keep it up on screen here. Who would like to kind of try to decide or dissect how this shot was, was created? Uh, I'll say something. Okay. Yeah, please. <laughs> um, so <laughs> it looks like um, there's a, a light coming from camera, right? Maybe with a blue gel. Um, it also looks like it's got quite a bit of ambient light too. Like maybe the lights from the sauna. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you, are you, Victoria, are you saying that the, the ambient light you're looking at the red light? Is that right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Maybe, maybe for the blue, uh, you use a grid. Yeah, because it's not uh, spilling anywhere. Yeah. And and also there's some kind of ambient light. Maybe uh, you bounce it 
with a red yellow or something like that. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I like Victoria's comment about the sauna though. Like the the up top, I would have like I was thinking red and um, blue, but the sauna lights that was it's pretty smart. Yeah, it could be either. Um, again, I'm at a disadvantage because I'm colorblind, but to me, it looks like a blue gel coming in from camera right three o'clock with a grid probably because it's not spilling all over the place. And then either the ambient light in the sauna is a warmish color or you used uh, a, a second red, a second light with a red gel um, to kind of light up the walls and the left side of her face. I wonder, so I, I've, I've heard the grid comment a few times. I wonder though, could it just be a mag sphere or possibly even a mag box, but just really close, like just barely outside of the camera frame. And that's why we're not getting a lot of spill. Cause I do see, if you look at the wall behind her, you see some blue there. Um, so it makes me think that mm. it might've been a little bit larger light source. I don't know. Yeah, I guess it actually it could because yeah. her hair. Yeah. The blue yeah. is in her hair as well. Yeah. So and and, and the mask, uh, a line, yeah. uh, a, ma a line mask, maybe. Uh huh. Mm. Yeah. Well, and somebody, somebody had just mentioned. I, I think it was Victoria or Alex. When you mentioned that the catch light, and yeah. oftentimes you won't, you won't see a catch light on a very small. Yeah, modifier, the like catch grid, light, um, and mm. the the camera right eye. The catch light's pretty big, and it looks like it's um it's pushed over so far that you can't see that same catch light in the other eye. Uh -huh. uh, but it looks like a pretty large catch light. So maybe it's a sphere. Yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, well, I, uh, it might be just be close to, to her with a sphere. So that yeah. actually, now that you mentioned the catch light, it makes sense. Well, and I, I, I so my guess, I, I almost feel like it's more of the mag box, but, but short lighting her kind of behind her with a blue gel. And that's why you get the blue on the wall and then a little bit of catch light in the front. Um, and it's probably like maybe two or three feet from her, like really, really close. Um, it looks like Hannah Reynolds on YouTube says, I think it could be a sphere and a grid is, is what she's saying there. Mm -hmm. um, any other guesses before we let Linda tell us the uh, reveal the magic? Maybe it's a third, a third uh, ambient light behind her. Mm. Also with a red or an orange yell. Yeah. True. Well, Linda, why don't yeah. you reveal the magic? Tell us how it was shot. <laughs> so um, it was a really tight, sauna i'm gonna say no more than like 12 feet i used two lights um i used um a flash a strobe camera right um and it was on the seat that she's actually sitting on i did not take any stands with me so it was on the seat and directed up with a grid and a blue gel pointing so that's camera right heading straight for her. So that little spill you see behind her head as well, that blue, that's where that's coming from. And, Wait, and how, how far away was that flash? Oh my gosh, not very far at all. Okay. It was okay. like, it was close. So maybe seven, eight feet. It was, okay. it, that, that's how close it was. And then I had another flash directly behind me. Um, I think I actually held it right above my head and that had a red gel and they were and the one um, behind me was gridded and the blue did have a grid and a sphere on it so it was two flashes the red with um right above my head um pointing directly towards her and spilling onto the, the wall and that had a grid and a red gel and then the blue with a grid and a sphere so that was it two lights Ooh. I, I love how I took everyone down a totally different rabbit hole. I just, I just <laughs> and there, was, there wasn't much ambient in there. But I think there was one bulb in there that was slightly, it was a warm color, but it didn't, um, it didn't do too much. So there was an ambient light in there. I, just, I mean, yeah, I, I, I think, I think everybody was on the right track until I just took you guys and threw you totally off. <laughs> I, yeah. I will say, yeah, there's a couple comments. Uh, uh, Anchor said a sphere with a red gel and a grid with blue. So that was pretty dang close. Yeah, that was uh, very close. Yeah, uh, two lights, two grids, as somebody mentioned. So awesome, awesome. Well, that was actually a really good one to start with because uh, you, it, I, I was kind of with Victoria. I think with the, I was thinking you were right that it was probably more the ambient light, kind of like one of those red sauna lights 
that was creating that. But I love, uh, Linda, I love how you got creative with two gels and you were able to balance them both to be able to create that really cool effect there. Super cool. Thank you. Kind of, it kind of actually reminds me of um, Lindsay Adler and how she uses gel color and kind of mixes them. I was completely together. inspired by her. Yes, I think she just put out a post that week. I did this, um, I don't know, a couple months ago, and I just decided to, to shoot this for fun. I love it. So <laughs> cool. Thank you so much for sharing that. Awesome, awesome job. All right. <laughs> Christian's already doing it. <laughs> actually actually i don't even know why i'm doing it. i didn't even choose an image I could, I could i could throw one up there just for fun um all right how how about uh why don't uh well why don't we why don't we grab one of you guys why don't uh jesse why don't you take yours let's go with yours next oh yeah okay, okay. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so, so Jesse, I, I don't know if you want to say too much about this. I actually, I won't say anything because I, I, I have seen the behind the scenes on this. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I'll, um, I'll just say that I picked a, a really tricky one purposely for, because I thought that it would work well for this experiment that we're doing here. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to go into any detail before we dive in. So that's all you're giving us. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to guess. I think you use four, four flashes. Uh, one with the blue gel, one with the red one, another one over them, and another behind them. Like the, I see okay. like a, a, a small spill of light in the feet of this guy, and mm -hmm. maybe you use, you use some grids to to. Concentrate the light uh, for one, uh, uh, well, for each other. So I do want to give one hint here uh, before we go too far down the wrong path. Uh, this is a composite. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's and and maybe it might even be a good idea to let them know how many. Yeah, how many? It's a it's a, it's a two composite, right? Two shot composite. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So three flashes. Uh, you change the gel in, in one and, and another one, you put the red one and another one, the blue. One behind them and another one over them. Maybe with a map box. Okay. I mean, could it just be the same flash? Just obviously two different shots with two different gels, two shots, a red gel, blue gel. And then just composited. I mean, just trying to simplify it a little bit, but, but just having to be just one flash. You took the shot on the left, you took the shot on the right, and then you just composited into it with just two different gels. Yeah, what's confusing me is so it's it's short lit, and it's probably the lights are behind them, um, aiming like this. <laughs> but then the light on the guy's feet at the bottom that's what's confusing me like is there a light down there <laughs> well i think the i think it's lit from below because of the way yeah. that they're posed i think they're almost like like they were told to look down almost because they want the faces in the light so i feel like it they were lit from below there's light, the light on her crossing. hair up here i could just be catching from the light below though yeah like, so yeah, so we, we do have a few comments. Uh, one person, uh, hindsight imagery on YouTube said, I think the light's coming from below. I see shadows on top of their arm. Uh, we got a few people mentioning two grids, uh, colored gels, uh, right and left down, two flashes, two gels. So it's kind of what people are saying. I, I'm still, I'm trying to figure out, actually, I already know, but but this, this jump right here, <laughs> it's amazing. Can you do that again? You no, it, man. no, no, no. We're we're not going to show that more than once. I wish um, we had you there for the shoot. It would have been so much better. <laughs> I know. Uh, There's, I think it's. Um, I think it might be two lights. I definitely feel that there is a light coming from above, and I think maybe the mag box with the focus diffuser. I think, and then I think there is. Um, and I'm looking at this just because you mentioned that it's a composite, because I'm thinking 
well, if she was shot the exact same way as he was, just change the the color of the gel. Uh, I'm just, is that smoke or is it powder? I'm just because to me it is smoke. So I think that it's two. Nope. So I think a, a mag box. On I top. think it's powder. Powder. I think so too. Jesse, okay. Jesse, what is it? Smoke or powder? It's definitely powder. Yeah. Okay, it is powder. Yes. Okay, so one above. Um, I think uh, Victoria was like she was saying it was short lip and I, but the arm and the feet. I think there's one coming from from below. And I I can't say. And Wait, are they laying down? No. And then you flipped it. <laughs> You're onto something there. If it's powder, maybe the powder Warmer. is colored, and you just use like just like three flashes or two flashes, one below and then one coming from the back because there's I, color on the arms. So maybe yeah. there's no colored grids. And the color on her legs as well. That blue is like really on her legs. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's why like maybe there's no colored, I'm sorry, not colored grids, co colored uh, gels. It's, uh, we're, we're getting warmer and warmer. I, I will say uh, YouTube is actually figuring it out. Uh, <laughs> is it like a, <laughs> is it like a mattress with powder on it and then you had them bounce on their back? So Jesse, do you have the behind That's the scenes? Fun. Yeah, <laughs> let me see if I can, uh, just give me a second here. New share. Okay, yeah. So it, it does look like like the effect. Okay. Of, yeah, that's what I was just about to say. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're bouncing. Trampoline, that's so cool. <laughs> trampoline, oh my gosh. Okay, so this is a trampoline in the backyard of a friend. And we covered it in holy powder uh, and the powder is colored, right? So we didn't need to use any gels for this. Um, and then, so this is for the red gel for him, right? And then this is blue powder for her. Uh, and basically what we had them do is jump up in the air as high as they could, land flat on their backs uh, and kind of like vault off of the trampoline as parallel to the trampoline as possible. Um, and it's two lights, right? So like this, the key light from above, it's the mag box with the focus diffuser uh, held by Moira up there on a 12 foot stand to kind of come from above to give it a little bit more of like an ethereal kind of quality to it. Um, so we start out with her with the blue powder. And then there's, sorry, there's one light in this shot uh, about three o'clock camera right coming in basically just to backlight uh, the blue powder. Um, so then we did the same for him and just flipped him around, uh, lit again from a little bit above and to camera right here, and then one light directly behind him to backlight the powder. Uh, and then we just had them both basically bounce uh, off the trampoline straight That's up into so the air. Cool. There were, so we had quite a few <laughs> mishaps, as you can imagine. That's there excellent. Were a lot of outtakes. I love that. Um, <laughs> and then, and then, yeah, we just flipped both images vertically like this and uh, composited them together. So let, let's go back to the original real quick, Jesse. Okay, one sec. I have it in a different thing for some reason. Okay. Uh, okay, there we go. So it would be so hard to like stay perfectly parallel. Did you find that you had to kind of rotate the image? Like if it was a little bit diagonal, like rotate it to make it perfectly vertical? Lightly, yeah. If I... Is that working? Okay, so you can see her on the bottom now. You can see that it's uh -huh. not exactly parallel, right? Because as she's coming uh, off, the tendency would be for the torso to shoot straight back up and pop them right uh -huh. back up to their feet. Uh, so yeah. that was honestly the hardest part of the entire thing was just getting them yeah. to come up as parallel as humanly possible. So if you look at it like this, you can kind of see how the shot on the bottom, how she came up there a little bit more diagonally than we wanted. But uh, yeah, we just rotated it a little bit. And then he was able to, I think he was some, he was doing flips and all kinds of stuff. So he was like some sort of, he was really acrobatic. So he was just, yeah. uh, he had really nice, you know, body control uh, yeah. in the air. So it was easier. That is, that is so cool. So cool. Yeah. You got, uh, you got rad. What? So fun. Love it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Gary, Gary on YouTube, Gary did guess that he had mentioned uh, uh, powder on a trampoline and bouncing. So uh, yes, Gary, it, Gary. before though is the question. Is Gary Ooh, cheap? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
It's an awesome, awesome image. Thank you so much for sharing that. That 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 certainly was uh, maybe I don't know. I we'll have to see what else has coming, but uh, that that might be one of the the the. I've never done anything that creative before. So awesome job, Dave. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Oh, I'm not going point after point that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a knee jerk reaction. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Does anyone want to go next? Yeah, awesome. I'll Christian. go next. Okay. Oh, go ahead, Christian. No, Christian already said it. I'm not going next now. <laughs> you just. All right, we'll let Christian go. There you go. Oh man. Ow. That's incredible, man. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, this was in a school. Uh, as usual, I only have like 10 or 15 minutes to do it. But the good, the good feeling is that the kids have already most of, of, of everything set up. So I just have to put the, the lights, but that's the complex part. I have to use a lot of lights to, to do this one. That's the only, the, the only tip that I, that I, that I wanna give. Awesome. Hey, Christian, before we get started, I'm kind of curious. I'll, I'll let everyone kind of analyze the shot here for a second. But I'm kind of curious. So you do a lot of these senior portraits uh, there in Colombia. Is it typically, instead of doing like a whole session, do you typically have each person kind of decide on a theme that represents yeah. them? And then yeah, they tell you they tell you ahead of time? Or do they, do they come up with kind of the whole creative aspect of it? How does that work? Uh, normally, I do a presentation. I, I show them how, how I work. And I just give them the homework they have to bring everything set and they have 10 minutes to to do the photo wow. so each one wow. prepare everything in the school and i just have to arrive and and work with and work with them that is so cool i if i could show you my senior high school photo with you know my suspenders <laughs> <laughs> lean, lean, and then i'm leaning up like against a foam 96 right like with my brick wall and ivy fake ivy and stuff um, I, I wish I had something this cool when I was a senior showing the, who I actually was and, and the person that I, you know, I don't know. This yeah, is so okay. rad. Not all the kids do the, their homework. Most of them, uh, came to the, to the session and, oh, that was today. And okay. Uh, and they sit down and that's it. But the ones that work it, uh, and, and think about, uh, how to, how to do it well, they bring a lot of cool ideas. Yeah. So awesome. So real quickly, before I let the, the panel guess here. Uh, we have photos by Nick Patel says he thinks it's water on the drums. And then Carlos, uh, Felipe Martinez says pole bowl, uh, on the drums, drums with three flashes. So those are a couple, uh, things that comments coming in from YouTube. Now, what do you guys think? How do you think Christian lit this photo or shot? I this think, photo? uh, mag box from above coming sort of yep. straight down onto the, mm -hmm. onto his face for sure. Um, and then at least two other lights with gels to uh to color the water for sure well it's not yeah. water yeah. coming in from it's, like it's the side. powder i think it looks like, like it's powder oh like yeah. a um finger paint it looks like chalk almost like colored chalk but i think you definitely have like a red gel and a blue gel too but i don't know if it's like really picking up on the chalk because then there's yellow chalk down here too but okay. that doesn't look like that's coming from a light it just looks maybe it's all yellow chalk and because there's some up here too um and i'm pointing like you can see where <laughs> <laughs> so, um yeah just because if the top two, because my daughter just started playing drums, and I'm going to assume those two at the top are symbols, right? And they have color on them, and symbols are quite reflective. So I wonder if there are gels on them. And I think it's all lights because I'm also looking underneath him, underneath the seat, and there is it. It does have a, a tiny bit of that rim light on the, but that could be. I think there's one main light above. I think it's a mag box. I think there's two lights coming in like that and i think there's a small backlight um very i don't know modified maybe with a sphere and a grid so it doesn't have a lot of spill but um i think there might be gels in this too to just bring out the color because i'm just looking at those symbols top left and right and the powder doesn't reach up there 
So I, 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 I kind of like where you're going, Linda. I will say when I look down at the bottom of the yellow, I do see the powder, not just yellow, but I also see it looks like reflective yellow off part of the drums. I can't tell if that's the, the dust or it's reflective. So I, and, and then I see the red light hitting the drum in the front just a little bit. So I kind of, I kind of imagine a flash with a red gel on it left at about maybe eight o'clock or so. And then I, I imagine another flash on the right with a blue gel at about three o'clock or even two o'clock now, nah, probably three o'clock. And then I, I, I want to say mag box overhead, but also I know that that Christian, he loves using the mag sphere as well. And I think if it's high enough, I think it could, pro well, no, because there's kind of a softer shadow. It looks like underneath. Gosh. Oh, and then I was gonna say, and then I, I almost kind of feel like there might even be a touch of yellow in the front, like a yellow gel, just barely hitting the front. Gosh, I don't know. This is puzzling. This is hard. You guys, these pictures are much harder than the ones at Target. <laughs> <laughs> I originally thought it was just, I think we all agree that there's a, you know, mag box or something as the main light. Um, and then, it, you know, either like side lights for the, the drums, you know, whatever's coming off of them, or even like another grid or mag sphere pointing straight down at the drums where it's not getting the drummer, just getting the drums and whatever's lighting it up or maybe the, the top of the drum is providing a little bit of fill like if it's a white top mm, right mm. good point i think well, okay, I, i'm with i think i think that there's definitely obviously a soft box or a, a larger light source pointing at him and then you have the two gels on the sides but i, I almost think that they're pointed up at the bottom of the of the um I'm not a musician at all, but it, what is that up top? The symbols? Does that make sense? Um, so yeah, I think it's just three lights and a main light mag box uh, pointed down at him. Um, but I can't, I, I don't think there's a, th a fourth light. I think it's just three lights. Well, we ready for Christian to reveal his magic. Okay, guys, there are five lights. So- Whoa. One in each drum, inside the drum, with a gel. Uh, in the left one is a red one. In the right one is a blue one. Behind him are two lights with yellow and, and orange. And over him, a map box uh, uh, with the soft diffuser over uh, very close to him. And that's it. Do you remember, do you remember, do you remember the, the Blue Man group? <laughs> yeah. yeah. They have a show where they they play with the drums and water and colors inside inside the that that drums they have uh, lights. It's the same it's the same principle. Oh, we don't yeah. use water because uh, it was very hard not uh, to 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 manage it and and, uh, and the powder give us a, a very nice texture and and get better the color. And Christian, how long do you have to shoot these? Did you say you said fifteen minutes? I was so lucky with this one. Uh, this actually was the first one. The first shot, I have uh, like ten, uh, like ten shots, but I ha I was so lucky that the first one was the best one. Wow, that's incredible, and, man! And yeah. Christian, what what time of day was this shot at? Uh, the middle of the day. We, we were inside a, a like a big room. They okay. they put a lot of curtains, so they dark all the all the place, and that's it. So, Christian, can I ask the two lights, the um, the the light that was, I think you said there's one behind him. Did you say yep. that? Where where was it pointing? They were pointing to the drums. Uh, more to, uh, we I, we want to uh, do like a rim light uh, behind him, but at the end it works uh, uh, popping up the the powder. Wow, that is cool. That is super Actually, cool. kind of kind of luck in the first in the first shot. So. So Christian, if you, you you do something amazing like this, and let's say another senior uh, says, "I want a shot just like that," are are you down for doing it, or do you make them all kind of get creative and designing how they want to do it and make them all kind of? How, how does that work? Uh, it's like it's actually very hard to repeat a photo. Uh, you know, each mm -hmm. kid has their own personality. They work. Yeah. Uh, they bring different stuff every every time. So we already do a few similar, but we try it all the time to change it, like in, uh, in a different angle or using different colors or whatever. We, we, we try to, to not to repeat photos. I, I, like I said in the beginning, I wish 
all senior photos were this way, like where it, you know, even, even myself, when I go out and do a senior session, you know, I'll go out with somebody for an hour and we'll do, you know, 50 photos that are nice and whatever. I just love the idea of taking a theme and, and really going with it and going hard. So cool. So cool. So awesome. Thanks. Any other, any other comments or anything guys? No, cool. that's incredible. I quit. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. What type of powder is that Christian? Uh, I don't know the word in Spain, in English. It's like harina, harina de trigo. Maybe you can help me, Esteban. It's corn powder. Okay. Yeah, corn powder. powder. Yeah. I love, love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. You, uh, uh, let's see. You got some people saying, uh, please save this. I missed the beginning. Totally. We'll, we'll keep it up on YouTube for sure. Um, man, my senior photos are so lame. <laughs> Amazing job, Christian. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, oh, here's a question for you, Christian. Somebody asked, did any of the equipment get ruined in the making of this photo? Uh, no, just we have to clean a lot. Uh, there, there was a complete mess in that room, so they have to put uh, a lot of plastic on the floor, on the walls, and there's still a, a lot of like smoke. So, uh, for example, the soft, the, the, the Mac box was completely white at the end of the session, but it's only five minutes or something like that. You have to protect a lot of the camera, particularly the camera, yeah. because there's a lot of dust that uh, get uh, over it. So that's yeah. the only thing that you have to be uh, careful. So I use a Ziploc uh, for everything and, and I put it with tape and that's it. That's so cool. Hey, uh, and Christian, just to correct what uh, uh, Stella and I had said, uh, we, we had mentioned corn powder. I think it's actually called corn starch as somebody had mentioned. They corrected me. Oh, right, so. yeah. Corn starch. Uh, corn starch. Starch. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Okay. So, um, cool. Yeah. Uh, Andrew had mentioned they use it for a lot of the co color run events as well. They'll they'll dye corn starch and they'll use it to to throw and stuff. But yes, uh, for those who are going to do something like this, make sure that you protect your camera because any of that dust or corn starch or even what Jesse's photo with the holy powder stuff that can all get inside your camera and can damage the sensor. So you wanna make sure that you are very, very um, careful. And likewise, when you're shooting on a beach with sand, right? I mean, any of that kind of stuff can damage your lens and your camera. So you gotta be really careful. Here in Colombia, uh, I met a guy that used condoms. So he, he cut it, he cut the <laughs> condom and put it uh, over the camera, but it works so so well in the, in the beach. Of course, it's some kind of funny, but it's a, a good way to protect it. It's funny that you say that because that's what I call my uh, the thing that I put over my camera when I shoot these shots is my camera condom. So I don't use a literal condom. Uh, Literally a condom. Yeah. That's that's what awesome. I would use. What size condom? Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't Magnum. ask that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Who would like to go next? Mr. Gill, you want to go? You're going to go right before Christian. Yeah, why not? I mean, I I almost exited out and ran away as soon as he showed that shot. So um, I might as well just go and do the one shame right now. Uh, hold on. Let me just share my screen real quick. This is fun, by the way, guys. I'm actually I you guys are all so inspiring and and yeah. I like I said I, I didn't pick a photo to share it. I'm glad I didn't because <laughs> I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be in the hot seat like you guys. <laughs> oh. Can you guys see this? Uh, no. What? There we go. Uh, there it, is. There go. I, it looks like. Yeah, it's it's coming up, but okay. There we go. Do do uh do a shift tab and let's see if we can get full screen or F. I guess you can hit F, F and we get full screen that way. uh how about now no it's weird it, it like it's like loading kind of yeah. funky huh let me stop my share Although, and i'll reshare you know what's you know what's interesting is it looks like it's coming up okay on youtube oh no never mind it's the okay. same way yeah it's 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 showing like a uh like, like the light like lightroom is is on top of it sort of hmm. i mean I mean, we could get by. We could get by like that. That's that's totally fine. Can you guys see it now? I just read. Yeah, it. yeah we can see it. Okay. If you put it on. The um. So. No. If I go to full screen, I think it exits it out. So. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, so I'll just have to share. I mean, it's fine. Get rid of these tabs. Yeah. All right, so that's as close as we're gonna get. Uh, so everyone probably was expecting me to do a uh, a composite because that's what I everyone always likes me to share. But I've shared so many composites that I thought I would go back to a couple of years and and share something that when I was first experimenting with multiple lights. So um, this is actually so I wanna I wanna try to get you guys to guess not only the lighting uh, that I use, but but if you can guess on a uh, uh, a focal length. In case, mm. uh, in, in case you guys are wondering what focal lens this is, because it's it kind of plays part in the the uh, technique that I'm using here. So, huh. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and guess like a fifty, a fifty millimeter lens, and like maybe you, uh, Brenheiser method. I'm gonna butcher this name, but like. Brenizer. Yes, yes. I <laughs> shouldn't oh, butcher it. <laughs> but yeah, maybe that. But I would say like two lights, one directly at them and then one um, behind them. So. You said it's not a composite though, right? Uh, so there are multiple techniques being used here. With... Okay. So I don't know if the Brenizer method is technically considered to be a composite or not, but usually it's involves taking a whole bunch of frames and stitching them together. Um, right. Huh. And wide, I, for the wide lens, like, uh, even thinking. The interesting thing though, is I, I, I was thinking wide at first, but then I don't see any kind of distortion. Granted, there's some really good lenses out there that don't give you any of that barrel distortion, but I, it, it does feel like it might be a Brenizer or, um, or even, even just really far back with like a 135 or something. I don't yeah, know. It's like 200 millimeter, really far back. Okay. That's, that's a good guess, but it's, it's, but it's not with a long lens. <laughs> you said and, it and, is a composite or isn't a composite? Uh, it's actually, I mean, when I reveal how I shot it, it'll probably give give everything away. But but it it is a composite. Um, to me, it looks like it could be like a long exposure, and then you took a second shot with the couple in it, and then merged them together. I don't know. Stars, because we, we can very clearly see the stars. I can tell you have a nice camera. <laughs> <laughs> like this is an iPhone photo. <laughs> oh, iPhone. <laughs> yeah, I'll just, I'll, I might as well just give that away. Yeah, we shot yeah, with an iPhone. Model iPhone 4. <laughs> iPhone 4S. The S version is, is the one they started to. Yeah, so so it's, a, it's a long exposure for me. Okay. Okay. Yeah, well, def but, definitely a long exposure for the stars. And then uh, there's one light on the front of them, which you either brushed out if it was a multiple exposure. Um, and then is, I'm thinking maybe just one light behind them way back because there's some hot spots on the trees right next to them. And the, maybe that one light lit up all the branches towards the edge, towards the edges. So maybe a sphere to kind of spread that backlight a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. So it's a, uh, uh, it's, it's a composite of a long exposure, which is why you see the stars there. There is also a Brenizer. This was shot with a twenty-four millimeter, and it's about six different images. Um, and then there is also an assistant uh, right by the branches on to their left that I had to mask off. So. If you want to put everything together, you're looking at a long exposure for the sky. You're looking at a Brenizer, and you're also looking at a composite compositing out uh, my assistant that was holding the softbox that's on on them. And as far as lighting, there is there are two lights that are pointed up toward the trees that create that that dramatic effect on the tree. So 
I was basically exposing as if I wanted to um, uh, to do a silhouette of the trees. And since the light was pointed right at them, um, it just gives it that like very creepy look. So this this tree is actually tiny. Um, it's it's very very small, uh, and it just gives it that look because of the amount of shots that I put together uh, with with the Brenizer. So it's a Brenizer long exposure, and and a composite all in one shot. Super simple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tricky man, very tricky. Yeah. You know. Um, you know. You know, it's okay. interesting. I, I don't, so I, I'm familiar with Brenizer. Uh, and again, for those who haven't seen that effect, you can go check that out. But I don't know if I've seen a Brenizer long exposure with stars, with lighting and everything all together. Like, I think this might be the first time I've seen that. Granted, I'm sure it's out there, but I don't know. It's super unique. Oh yeah, they're, they're out there. Yeah. And, and as far as, I mean, so this type of Brenizer is more... So when you think of Brenizer as more of a, a, a shot that is taken with a long focal length wide open to still have the separation of a long focal length um, mm -hmm. while still having that wider angle of view. Um, so actually, do you mind if I show another shot that gives it the same technique? Yeah, please. Right. So I have, so this here, I don't know if you can see it on the screen. I can't go to full screen, but you can really see the, you can't really see the effect too much when you're live, but um, this was, a couple of years ago, but, but if you look at this, so this has, um, this shot here is basically all the shots put together. So I made them with a, a frame on them. You could see how many different shots there are. So the first shot is usually the one of my assistant lighting the couple. Then he moves out of the way. I take the second shot to the left. Um, and then I just take all the other ones. And then once they go put into, uh, into Photoshop, uh, Photoshop takes the, the shot, that's over here and it puts it on top. So he's already been exited. I don't even have to take him out of the shot. He's already out of it mm -hmm. based on what Photoshop is reading. Um, so, and that's, and that's the final shot. So this one is more toward like the whole Brenizer look where you have that separation. If somebody has a really big print, then it gives it that separation while still having that wider, the, the wider focal length. Um, but this one's more like a panorama where you're just trying to make something look bigger than what it is. So, so cool. We got, we got a few comments. Uh, and by the way, Adam, uh, he, he's, he's saying that uh, he would love to do one of these sessions where we just guess focal lengths of lenses, which would be quite fun. Uh, but we have um, Sarvesh uh, was like, Brenizer with 24, seriously, exclamation point. And then Miranda, she actually asked a question, which, uh, which I was, same thing was going through my mind, which is, uh, what was the long exposure to get the stars? Do you remember what your settings were? Because again, Brenizer are typically you're like, shoot, 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 shoot. Did you, so I guess maybe a two-part question. One, did you use a tripod to set it up? Or did you, I like, what was, I don't know. I don't even know what my question is. I guess my question is like, like how did you, how did you do a Brenizer with a long exposure, I guess? Oh, do we, do we lose Esteban? Esteban's frozen. It's frozen. This this is like him dropping the mic. Like, here's yeah. my image. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> He's gone. Uh, we lost him. Well, well, we'll see if he comes back, and if he does, we'll 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 have him uh, explain a little bit more. So let's uh, let's do this. Uh, let me stop participant sharing there. Okay. Oh, there he is. He joined us. Oh. Yeah. Back. Sorry, I don't know what happened. All right, that's all right. Oh. We we all voted um, to kick you off the island. You've been exterminated <laughs> or extinguished. Exterminated. <laughs> oh, you, you're not just kicking me out of the island. You're exterminating me. That's cool. <laughs> I, I don't know if you heard the question. It was just the question was about the uh, the Brenizer with a long exposure. How how long was your exposure on some of those photographs? So it's, it's multiple exposures put into the image. So so the one of the stars is one exposure. So I didn't use the tree for that. That so I only used the the sky for that. And it was a couple. I mean, Got I it. can't remember exactly how long it was, but it was a couple of seconds long. Okay. Um, if you actually zoom in, you could see a little bit of a movement. So I mean, under thirty seconds. Um, but that was just there for the sky, and then and then the other the other shots were more for the Brenizer, and then to take my assistant out, it was um, I had to have him move for a second shot, and I used the shot without him in it to composite him out of the uh, out of the image. So very cool, very cool. Thanks for sharing that. 
So uh, we'll, we'll jump over to Alex next. But before we do that, Alex, as you're bringing up your image, uh, one question from YouTube is asking, uh, if you had one lens for the rest of your life, what would you pick? Uh, why don't you guys just all, Victoria, if you had one lens, what lens would you pick? Uh, the 24 to 70. 24 70. Jesse, what about you? Oh, man. Same, probably. Yeah. Because if it's just one lens, I feel like you need somewhat of a range. That versatility. Okay. Yeah. I would say the 58 Nikon, 58 1.4. That's okay, fifty-eight one four. Christian, any any yep. opinion there? Oh, Christian's muted. I think he said twenty-four seventy. Thirty-five for weddings and uh, eighty-five for portraits. Oh, you're cheating. <laughs> yeah, cheater. We got a cheater in the house. Exterminate him, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And Linda, I didn't I didn't hear what you said. Uh, 7200 that's i love that lens it's a workhorse you know yeah i i will say my my go-to lens lately it's been the uh 50 millimeter rf uh with the eos system uh I, I bought that lens i just love how sharp it is and i shot a wedding recently where i should say recently three weeks ago four weeks ago when we could actually leave our homes and uh and i used it for like nearly the whole wedding it was amazing so um and then with that alex let's have you share what lens you would use and then we'll let you share your image um, I would say 35, just there's a lot of range you can do with that. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks for that question you guys from YouTube. So Alex, with that, let's have you share your photo. All right. Can you see it all? Yes. Ooh. Yes. That's solid. You want to give us any background on it, Alex? Um, it was at night and it was outside. No. <laughs> Uh, there's a prism for sure. <laughs> Correct. Yep. Clearly, the backlight that you can see, I think, or maybe that's just part of the prism reflection. Hmm. You are you talking about right at his shoulder, kind of? Uh, yeah. His left like back shoulder. Hand. Yeah. I'm assuming that's what that is. It does. It does look like a light, almost. It almost looks like, I, I mean, at first I was thinking a mag sphere, but it doesn't really look like a mag sphere unless, unless the prism changed the shape just a little bit. It almost looks like a mag bounce almost a little bit. Mm. Uh, but I don't know. All right, I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to let you guys talk. You guys, you guys are the experts here. I'm just the moderator. <laughs> to me, it looks like maybe just one light, that one right behind. And since, since some of it is peeking through, it's kind of illuminating the prism maybe and you know it's kind of wrapping around nicely it looks like the lights bouncing off of maybe her chest and back up onto his face and maybe off of his white shirt uh and onto her face a little bit her cheek there and her neck so i'm gonna guess just one light on this one mm -hmm. yeah that's what i, I guess too one light one. uh maybe you use uh some kind of crystal that they use normally in the decoration of the of the tables uh, but yeah, just one. Yeah, light. I don't know if this is an actual prism though. I almost feel like it's it's the I've seen them before. It's um it's like a ring. Oh yeah, like a fractal. That... Is that what they call that? Yeah, yeah like the beveled edges ring. all the way around. It's kind of beveled, and then maybe in the middle, it's it's clear. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The fractal. Yeah. Like have a hole in the center. Yeah. Yeah. It, it looks like there's a hole. I mean, I feel like there's. Oh, actually, there's some reflection toward the center, but maybe it's the shape of of the uh, the filter. Huh. All right. Well, you guys, I'm just going to go ahead and say it is one light. I am probably the laziest photographer when it comes to night shots. If I have like five minutes, I put on a grid. I put on a sphere. And I'm also so bad at Photoshopping. You can see my assistant's neck in the middle of this photo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't see it. I didn't see that. Neck? Yeah, yeah, you can see his like he's like holding the um the grid below, but like maybe it's his hand. I don't I don't know, but this took me a long time to figure out how to get it out. Uh and I didn't even do a good job. <laughs> so but if I only have like 10 minutes for, you know, night portraits, that's like the um the grid, the sphere, and I'll just take this from like a bunch of different angles. 
um and then like have whatever's in my pocket so yeah at the time it was like oh, i have it right here like like one of these thingies i don't think it was this uh, exact one because i never use this that's why it's always on my chest <laughs> but um yeah and then that was in front of the lens and then Boom. And but then what are those things called that that little tool that you just held these up? These are these are fractal, fractal. filters. Yeah. Fra okay. I don't fractals, yeah. I don't use these ones. I have like a bunch of other ones that I've I've literally just gotten from like antique stores and they're just they're much bigger. Um but they with this one it's just I feel like intimidating. Every time like I bring this to a wedding, they're like, oh, like is that I don't I don't know. It's weird. So it's like brass knuckles, right? Yeah, Everyone always says, yeah. Oh, those brass knuckles, you're gonna beat me up. Yeah. yeah and if i can't like have the prism in my pocket i won't use it and then this usually yeah. doesn't fit in my pocket either so i find like different ones um but yeah and then after to get the colors i used um gradients but like color gradients because if you look at this uh it was basically all this again i'm pointing to the screen you can't see it but uh, i think you see it with my arrow right yeah so it was basically like all this like yellow color so I used like a, a gradient here with purple, a gradient here with blue, and then another one here with like purple. So. Just in, in post-processing is what you're saying, yeah, is that right? Yeah, in Lightroom, in Lightroom, because clearly yeah. I, I don't use Photoshop, so. <laughs> <laughs> so. So you're saying the headless assistant in the back is you basically got rid of their head, but they you left the neck there, is that right? Yeah, a head, a neck, an arm. There's there's some sort of body part going on here. But I also like I rarely bring stands too um, outside just because like I already have them set up on the dance floor, and that's again way yeah. too much work. So it's just like cool. We're gonna grab this and and go. And then you know usually they're already like drinking and having fun, and so all my night portraits usually are only like five ten minutes because that's all you have before they're like we're out. Yeah. yeah. As far so as that photoshopping goes, I just wanted to like, I feel like, you know, other people don't notice our mistakes as much as we think they do, you know, and we're more critical of ourselves. Yeah. Um, because I didn't, I, now that you mentioned it, I see the person's neck, the headless horseman back there kind of situation. <laughs> but uh, I, if you hadn't said anything, I would have never noticed. I would have just thought yeah. that it was uh, like a little smudge on the lens or a piece of flare, you know, because yeah. there's so much yeah. going on in the shot. I don't think it really matters in yeah. this case. Yeah, no, it's so true, Jesse. And I think oftentimes it's funny because especially newer photographers when they're starting out, they'll say, how long do you spend on each photograph? And I'll be like, oh, like a few seconds, maybe five seconds, 10 seconds max. If I go into Photoshop, I might spend a minute. And they're like, really? I spent like 30 to 60 minutes on this photograph trying to get rid of this or that or whatever. And I'm like, well, you're doing the work that nobody will even notice that you even did. Um, you know, find the things that are most important. And Alex, I think, you know, you going in, I, I, it would be really hard to try to construct you know, the, the dress and the hand and everything right back there. So like getting it to a point where it, it works is all you need to do. And like, like Jesse was saying, nobody's going to notice that stuff unless it's specifically pointed out. It's kind of like the FedEx logo. Actually. I, I always use that as my example. Most people don't ever notice the arrow in the FedEx logo, but there's an arrow there. But the moment somebody points it out to you, you see it everywhere. Every time I see a FedEx truck, I'm like, there's the arrow, but for the most part, nobody even notices it. So anyhow. Cool. I'm going to stop sharing. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so Alex, um, if you wouldn't mind, a few people have asked if you could hold the fractal filter up close. I'm going to spotlight your video here. Awesome. I'm going to bring you on. Yeah, let's, you let's do it. <laughs> there you go. So, so that's the fractal one. That's the one that you don't use as much, but you're saying you use similar types of objects basically, right? Basically. Yeah. <laughs> same, same sort of like effect with like the little spiral majiggy, but I mean, on my desk right now, like I have this thing, which I don't use either. Just, you can find this just like random places. Um, I'm coming up with a prison PDF next month just because I have a lot of time. So if you want to learn more about prisms, can get the PDF. Awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. It, where would they find that? I'm going to have it on my website. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Right on. I, and also, if you guys haven't seen it, uh, if you just search on YouTube, Magmod, Alex, uh, how, how do you say it? Wissiel? Wissiel? I'm sorry. We chill. Like you and me, we chill. We chill. <laughs> we chill. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Alex, we chill. Uh, well, it, search it up on YouTube. There's a how I shot it that I did with her a year, year and a half ago. And she showed some photos and showed a little bit how she uses those uh, things. I. It's funny. Every time I, I know, like, get to know photographers, I kind of like 
classify you guys like, oh, Jesse's the trampoline guy or whatever, right? <laughs> um, That's but how I Alex, think of myself too. I'm, not, right? I'm the trampoline guy. What's up? <laughs> no, but, but Alex, like when I think of you, that's what I think of is you like to put things like in front of the glass and kind of create some really interesting, unique kind of avant-garde type of looks. And I, I love it. So for sure. Mostly with one light too. Which, which some of the comments on YouTube were saying, like, I love that there's just one light, the simplicity of one light is so important. And there's so many things you can do with it. So thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, who's next? Let's see. We've, we've gotten through everybody except for Victoria and Matt. Okay. Who wants to go last? Oh, Victoria's going to go. Matt, you get to go last. How about that? That's fine. <laughs> All right. Excellent. <laughs> uh, I'm just reading some of these comments. Uh, somebody's bringing up the fact that uh, Esteban is the exterminated guy. Uh, hey, real, real quick before. Oh, uh, sorry. Story of my life. <laughs> awesome so victoria tell us about it looks a little fuzzy to me right now it's not fuzzy i promise <laughs> um i'm not gonna say anything Ooh, i like that i have to say victoria just looking at this the like i don't know if it's analogous colors or whatever but the purple and the green really speak to me it just like, oh, like this is this is like really like fun and like yeah i really like i that. love purple and green together yes yeah, it's like anything like the orange and like the blue and that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. huge fan of that. Cool. What do you guys think? I think you use a, a part of the ambient light and a, a second flash with a blue or, or well, oh, there you go. I, I can see it better right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> uh, with a blue yellow behind behind them, and maybe a, uh, a sphere with a grid uh, as a main light. I'm gonna guess three. I'm gonna guess the blue gel behind, a green gel this way, only because they have the the little like thing in but I don't know what this is. The wind chime maybe. That's <laughs> that has green on it. And then one maybe to light them in front with like a sphere. Maybe it's like on the ground hiding in front of that one leaf. I think I think three lights as well. I, I agree with you, Alex. I think a green gel one um, coming straight forward and then uh, a sphere one with a sphere on it and then a, a blue purpley one right behind them up lighting the, the plants behind them. Yeah, I think all you guys nailed it. It's, to me, it's three lights. Um, and because you've said the colors, now I know. Blue behind, right? <laughs> <laughs> Green for the foreground. And uh, from about three o'clock, camera right, probably a grid and a sphere for the couple. Any other thoughts? I still with the, the with the two the, the two flashes and the green maybe is the DJ light or the the venue light. I, I don't know. Yeah, I almost thought that the the green was just being lit by some sort of continuous light or something. I don't know, just something that's already there. And then she's got two lights: the the blue gel and then just the main light. That looks like it's coming from a, a max sphere, maybe a gridded max sphere or something like that. I actually don't even think there's a green light, unless I missed something. I stepped stepped out for a second, um, just because I see the potted plant down the front center, um, and that doesn't look green to me. It looks like maybe there's just a you know sphere or grid coming in, and it's lighting up stuff that's already green. Yeah, I agree with that. That's 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 yeah. what I would guess too. But if you look um, to um, to the very left on the screen, this big uh, leaf here—it seems like super green. Um, that's the reason why I think I think that there's a green there's a green gel. I think there's a green gel. <laughs> hmm. 
Any other thoughts? I'm I straight with right. my, my. I think you're right with the green ones. gel because, like, the green gel, it could be pointed high, and maybe like where there the flash is, maybe that's spilling onto the pot situation. But I'm ready to hear it. Yeah. We, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll mention. Uh, I'll, I'll just a couple of quick comments on YouTube. We have uh, Carlos says uh, there's so he says it in Spanish. I'm just gonna uh, change it to English here. He says three lights. Uh, one of those is 90 degrees pointed at the couple. Uh, one is behind them with a blue gel and the other is a green gel. Um, and then uh, Muhammad says, I think it's a warm gel and a magenta gel on the back. Uh, Adam, who likes to guess focal length, says he thinks it's a 35 millimeter. And uh, yeah, so those are some of the comments coming in. So Victoria, tell us your okay. magic. So I tried to trick you guys. Um, it is two lights. So I, let's see if I can go. I have um, some BTS. The green light was existing. This is a conservatory. Um, and then I don't know if you can see on the right, um, just by the way that the screen is like with the cameras on the right. I don't know if you can see, but uh, over here is uh, a light, a flash with a grid and a sphere mm -hmm. pointed this way. And then can you see my cursor? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So over here, underneath the cameras here, um, underneath us over here, um, is a light stand. And then behind them, I have my assistant holding um, a purple gel and a grid and pointing it at the uh, plants. Is is the purple gel? Is it also illuminating the the ceiling over there, or is that coming yeah. from something else? Yeah, I think so. Um, okay. <clears throat> You can kind of yeah. see it. Uh, yeah. Here. Yeah. Very cool. And and what what was your uh, focal length? Do you remember? Fifty millimeter. Fifty. It's You're so diagram. close, Adam. <laughs> There's your diagram. I love it. Let's see. Flash <laughs> triple gel. <laughs> are, are, did you create an app to to make these diagrams like that? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Super professional app. That looks just <laughs> like you. It does, right? <laughs> <laughs> I just like that you took the time to say hi to everybody on your on your app there on your on your uh, diagram. Uh, if anybody's interested in settings, because I I'm a dork too, um, the ISO was 1250. It said f 28 The shutter was one two hundredth. Um, I don't remember what the flash power was. <laughs> that's you know that's the one thing I wish our cameras would record is like the flash power because you get that question so often where people are like oh I love it you know what's your settings and you give it to them. And then they always follow up that question with, well, what were your flash settings? And you're like, I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, unless somebody's there like jotting it down, it's really hard to remember. Yeah. So usually I usually are pretty low though. Like exactly. 164th, 132nd, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's that's same with me. Unless it's outdoors for some, you know, like, you know, during the daytime or something. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. That's amazing. Yeah. You got a lot of uh, good comments there on Facebook or excuse me, on YouTube as well. Um, my, my favorite flash power is it did fire. That's what somebody Adam had said. <laughs> um, awesome. All right, Matt, I think you're up next. Yeah, saving the worst for last. No, <laughs> no not at all. <laughs> Can you guys see it? Yes. Yeah. Um, I, most of my wedding work is usually just one light. So I wanted to share something a little bit different and yeah. It's all yours. I love it. I mean, so what do you guys think? I Go zoomed to the catch lights to see if it could tell me anything. <laughs> well, I, I will. I will say just so it's not confusing. One of the lights is not a Magmod product. It's an umbrella. Ah, uh, so umbrella from camera left for this for the uh, Trevor. Main. Can we uh, eliminate him as well? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Am I exterminated? You, sorry, Matt, you're sorry, you're, exterminated. You're off the island. Yeah, you're exterminated. No, I I, I love it. I, I I would agree. I think I think it's an umbrella or some kind of like parabolic, maybe a larger even light source. Um, because it's definitely super soft coming from the left hand side, I feel. Sorry, I, I keep wanting to play, but I, I need to let you guys play. I need to be quiet. You're allowed to play. Okay, okay. It's like a sandbox. Yeah. I, I 
definitely say a parabolic umbrella pretty pretty large light source um then there are also a the hair back. light and there's a, a light on the background at the right maybe you use a cto uh to do that flare i think the light as well coming from camera left is feathered so it's definitely coming more towards the camera rather than directly on her because i'm not seeing we're not seeing um kind of shadowing on her on her right side left side depending on how you're looking at it and then the gel yeah i definitely agree with the gel I think three lights in total would be my guess. The uh, umbrella from camera left and then sort of a hair light with kind of a warmish gel uh, for her hair on the left side of the screen. And then the third light creating the flare on the right hand side. So Jesse, uh, Gary Rosado said very sim said similar. He said umbrella camera left, flash with grid and gel on camera right. I think when he's saying flash with grid, he's referring to the hair light. I, I actually think that hair light could have just been the large parabolic umbrella literally positioned just kind of perpendicular to her so that it's lighting up the hair and kind of wrapping around the front. Um, and then we got, uh, I'll just, while you guys are coming up here, I got hindsight imagery says, my guess, three lights, one soft box left, hair light, maybe snoot and continuous light on the, the backdrop. And Carlos says one flash with yellow uh, to the right and then to the left uh, bouncing uh, with a little bit of yellow touching the hair and the flash directed to the model. Sorry, I'm trying to translate this from Spanish here. Um, and then one more, Anchor says, uh, left umbrella, uh, silver inside and diffuse, right gel sphered with grid from two o'clock near the wall. I love all these guesses. This is good yeah, stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with two lights, two lights, a really large source, camera left, and then a grid or... Mm -hmm or a continuous light behind her, but, but I'm thinking gel, uh, gel grid behind her. And then just one really large light source. Cause I don't, I don't see enough separation to have a third light or a hair light. I, I really do. It's coming from the main light. So. Very cool. Any other guesses before we let Matt reveal the magic? All right, Matt, the mic is yours, my friend. Um, there's four lights. Uh, the umbrella is coming in from the front left. Um, then I had, I, I don't remember if it was a grid or a sphere or a combination of both, but um, coming in from over here onto the side, uh, there was you know grid or sphere with a uh, full CTO gel. There was a mag box with the focus diffuser with a full CTO gel warming up the hair on this side. And then I had the fourth flash, which was a mag sphere with a full CTO gel, um, kind of just out of frame to the right and then just pointing straight at my camera to get that flare. Nice. Where was the mag box? What? Where was the mag box? Uh, that was coming in from the right. So that was getting like her hair and uh, you know her left arm just a little bit. So were you using the mag box to kind of fill in the shadows on that side? Uh, to be honest, when I'm shooting like studio work, I just throw lights on and just keep experimenting with things. <laughs> <laughs> if it looks good, I keep going. If it looks horrible, I stop. Um, I love it. So I just kept adding adding in lights. I just really wanted to be warm and and. Yeah. Uh, yeah so I, I really just wanted to warm up like her hair without getting like the i feel like a lot of times when you do like a hair light or something coming in from the back at all i, I don't like a lot of that backlit look um so i wanted to get that same like hair light and warmth without just like tons of backlight that's awesome had so to come in more from the sides and tried to feather it as much as possible so matt a, qu a quick question for you typically on portraits um well, let me ask you, do you know this person that you're shooting? Like, do you know her well? Yeah. yeah. Is it a friend or a wife yeah. or who is this? Uh, this is a friend. I, I actually used her friend. studio for this, so. 
because because what I what I love about this is is I, typically portraits. I'm so used to like kind of rotating their shoulders a little bit and kind of leaning this way. But I love how she's actually directly centered, squared up. It makes it a very like strong, powerful, almost mm -hmm. like an empowering photograph for some reason. I don't know. I, I just that right. stands out to me as something different that that really works for me in this photograph. I I am awful at posing like individuals, like couples. I'm fine. Individuals. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, Luckily, this is my friend Alice, and she, you know, gets in front, you know, behind the camera enough that she kind of knows what to do. And I said, "Hey, you just do something, and I'll take photos of it." <laughs> I love how Matt's like, "I don't know what I'm doing." I just, yeah, uh, <laughs> I, uh, <I'll... laughs> that's funny. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. I, I love. It. So the the background is it is it a flare that like a little bit of light leak coming in? Is that what that is? Uh, so. The uh, the flares in between, like distance wise, in between my camera and the woman, uh, but it's out of the frame, just pointing like straight at my camera. So it's not affecting the light on her at all. It's just hitting my lens and giving that flare. I actually learned that from you. I don't know where I saw that, but you were talking about it at some point. And uh, yeah. yeah, I do. That's awesome. You. Yeah. Love it. So, so good. Well, guys, do you, do you mind if I just throw one image in there just for my, my, I, I literally delivered a, a wedding yesterday. It was the one that I shot three weeks ago. And, and I, 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 I actually talked about this photo for the, uh, the gel training that I did uh, a week ago, but I figured just to close this out, uh, I feel like I have to at least play with one image here. So you guys care if I share one more? Go for it. Um, Let's do it. Awesome. So, so there's nothing complicated about this. Uh, uh, I'm like Matt. I'm 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 just gonna tell you guys like I I'm not really doing anything fancy here, but I, I think it's fun. And if you saw the gel training, then you might be able to guess right away what what's going on here. Um, let's see, see. Let me share my screen. Share Lightroom. All right. You guys see the shot? It's white right now. White. No, that's why I think it's the same thing that was happening with me. Uh, little, a little okay. bit overexposed, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's try. Beautiful. Let's try this. You like that? All right, let's just let me share my desktop too here. Let's see if it comes up this way. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, you're good. All right. So again, there's there's nothing too fancy. I I, I actually I'm I'm interested more, or I should say, less about the light and more about how maybe the timing of the shot, or I don't know, like. Like me, I don't know. I don't. I guess I'm not even. I don't even know what to ask. But but I'm just curious if if you guys can kind of dissect this a little bit. What are some of the things you look for? It's like uh, just after sunset, and I'm guessing blue gel in Magbox with the white balance shifted all the way up to like ten thousand. Okay. Yeah, that'd be my guess too. Okay. It it's close but it's, it's not quite there. Any other guesses? Anything, any, what, what would you guys notice? Like what makes you think Magbox, for example? The big shadow on the ground or the big um, openness. <laughs> uh -huh. okay. I immediately look at the shadows uh, on the ground behind them uh, to, for that particular clue. And it's lighting them from head to toe. Okay. Jesse, you mentioned after, you know, just after sunset, what made you think that? It Well, it looks, I'm guessing that I'm wrong now, but uh, to me, it looked like the sun had just dipped behind the mountains there all the way at the left-hand side of the frame. Um, but now I'm thinking maybe it was like midday and you just drastically underexposed. I don't know. I'm also wondering if it was maybe just like a cloudy day. And uh, either like it was like a Kelvin shift or just, you know, in general, white balance, um, <clears throat> something like that. Yeah, I think you play with the with the white balance. Uh, yeah. I think so, too, because we know you, Trevor. We know you do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. I do like to play with white balance. Um, so so the interesting thing with with this one and the reason I wanted to share it was um, the couple, we had already taken uh, about an hour of portraits with them, which most of you guys know, we don't get that long usually to work with couples. Typically, it might be five, 10 minutes. Sometimes if I, most I would say on average, I get with couples is about 40 minutes or so. Uh, but this one, I happen to have a good 
uh, hour with them already. And we had actually had an additional half hour scheduled with them. I, I don't know if you guys have photographed Indian weddings, but a lot of times their cocktail is a little bit longer. Um, and, and so we'd already done family portraits and we still had a half hour, but she was going to change into another dress. And anyhow, so what I, what I did was, uh, sunset was still about 20 minutes away. Um, and, and I didn't want to wait. I didn't want to just like buy time. And we had already shot so much. I could tell they were kind of tired and she wanted to go change. So I, I, Jesse, as you said, I just lowered my exposure down quite a bit. Uh, my ISO was like an ISO 100. I think it was an F5. And, uh, my, my shutter speed is at one 200th of a second. So I was basically trying to make it darker, even though it wasn't dark. In fact, I think I have a photograph. Um, let's see. If I just scoot back here a little bit, you can kind of see this was, I mean, this was literally a few minutes prior. You can see it was pretty light outside um, or, you know, these shots right here. So, so it was pretty light outside, but I want to make it darker. So what I did was I made it darker, but instead of just using a blue gel in the box, uh, I did this little trick that I started doing recently where um, I'll, I'll hold up the gel to my lens. I'll take a picture through the gel. And then I tell my custom white balance shift. I just choose it in camera. I say custom white balance shift to that photograph. So everything looks <clears throat> totally different. And then I put the gel in the box to, to neutralize it. So, <clears throat> excuse me, in this situation, uh, because I wanted an orange, I actually held up a blue gel in front of my lens. I shot it, custom white balance shift. And then my camera shifted everything and made it uh, very, very orange. So I think my Kelvin on this one uh, in Lightroom, if you look at it, was like 50,000 Kelvin. Um, but obviously they're neutralized because the white balance shift. Jesse, it's very similar to what we did at the WPPI when I failed miserably on the stage. I thought you handled that really well, man. That was like <laughs> as, <laughs> that was as as good a job as you could have possibly done, considering all the te technical difficulties. You know. Yeah, but that's exactly the same the same type of uh, concept. And so, for those who are interested, if you want to see more about it, I go into a little bit more detail in the in the gel training a couple weeks ago. So, um, awesome. I'm going to stop sharing that. Uh, I just thought you guys were having so much fun. I thought, you know, I want to share an image too. Why not? That happened to be the one that I have that I just delivered yesterday. So um, right on, you guys. This has been fun. I, I apologize that we've taken a little bit more time than I asked from you guys. I, I was thinking we were going to go from 10 to 11. And, and here we are uh, about 35 minutes over, over past that time. So I appreciate all of you guys. I have to mention that, Christian, I think out of everybody, you sound like you have the most active household. And I kind of want to just go hang out in Bogota with you. Um, <laughs> I, every time I heard you chat, I could hear a bunch of kids like in the background and I just was like, dude, it sounds like a party at Christian's house. So yeah, there are my kids playing everywhere. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, guys, thank you so much. And, and thank you everyone for tuning in. We've had a lot of comments, and a lot of people chatting on, on YouTube. We appreciate you guys. We hope that this has been a bit of a respite from, from everything that we all are going on in the world right now with, you know, the craziness and being indoors and not being able to shoot. We hope that all of you guys were able to just participate and kind of forget all that for a moment and, and hang out with us for 90 minutes and, and learn and, and explore and be inspired by these incredible photographers. So uh, we, we can't, I said I should say we love doing this because of you guys watching and because of your comments. So please keep keep tuning in and and we'll keep bringing the fun and, and inspiring moments like these. So thank you so much to all of you guys, the the seven of you here. I appreciate all of you so much. Thank, thank you. you. You're amazing. So, thank you. Thank you. Time. Yeah. Thanks for doing yeah, this. Yeah. So with that, uh, thank you guys. Uh, everyone, this video will stay up on YouTube so you can watch it. Oh, I see Linda's daughter. <laughs> I see her. <laughs> oh, and I see Victoria's. I see Victoria's cat. Yeah. Oh, nice. Nice cat. Awesome. Hey, thank you again, guys. Uh, you guys, if you are not yet a member, join the Magmod community. We do challenges every week. We do these fun chats. Tomorrow, I'm going to be doing an editing wars with a group of photographers as well, where we give each of them the same image and they have three minutes to edit it. So come join us for that. Um, and I would be curious for those watching, I'd be curious if you appreciate these live video streams on Facebook or on YouTube. Let me know which experience you feel like is better um, because maybe, maybe this was a, a mistake that happened, uh, that we decided to go this route in the future. So thanks again. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, Take care. Guys. Have a good day. Stay See you guys. Guys.